Hello and welcome to our watercolour journey. This painting was created with a limited palette using neutral tint, cadmium orange and potter's pink. As always, the information and links for materials used are in the description below. Just click show more. Gear up and come paint with us. Before we start painting, let's talk about the preparation. Place your picture plane or paper at a 45 degree angle. Make sure the tape is secured to prevent seepage. Heinrich used a broad hockey brush available from Amazon to wet the paper. It might be a good idea to soak the hockey for a few seconds before you start to wet the paper. You will get a more even stroke if it has been soaked a bit. Now let's talk about the pink elephant in the room. Why Potter's Pink? This color is notoriously challenging to work with. It is an extremely weak color, which is devastatingly difficult to reweight. If you already have it in your palette and it has dried like mud cakes in the desert, then spray it thoroughly with water and wait. After a few seconds, start reactivating it with an old brush. You are going to need a bit of oomph to get it going, so make sure that you have time to do the preparation. The best thing to do is to make sure you have enough pigment premixed and use it as soon as possible. It can become a bit flaky if you let it dry in the mixing palette, so keep it wet while you work. What is so special about Potter's Pink? It's an amazing mixing color. It granulates beautifully and works well with almost any other color. We know there are three suppliers of Potter's Pink, Daniel Smith, Winsor & Newton and Schmincke. The Winsor & Newton pigment is a little bit pinker than the Schmincke, but Schmincke is a touch easier to work with. The Schmincke product is transparent and super granulating. Play around with some color mixes when you have the time. You will be amazed at the variety of blends and textures you can get when you add Potter's Pink. On the palette, we have at number one, Neutral Tint by Winsor & Newton, and number two, Potter's Pink by Schmincke. The hockey has been soaking for a while and now Heinrich is wetting the paper thoroughly up to the horizon line. The horizon line is just below the half line of the page. If you make your horizon line smack in the middle of the page, it tends to split your painting in two, a top half and a bottom half. Somehow lowering the horizon or raising the horizon limits the effect. Make sure that the foot of your picture plane stays dry. A stray drop won't hurt, but it's better to keep the whole area dry. He's using the smaller hake to start with the sky area. He's using a strong, creamy mix of neutral tint. Because your paper is very wet, you need to start off with a very strong mix. More pigment, less water, as the pigment will quickly diffuse into the water on the paper. If you start with a weak pigment strength, you will have to keep adding to get the desired tone, and that will cause overworking of the paper. Don't be afraid to be bold. Fortune favors the brave. Don't brush too hard. Coax the paint with a brush to flow where you need it. If you brush the paint, it will start to flow into your brush strokes and you won't get the benefit of the natural flow. Use the tip of the hake to add the first layer of the trees in the background, varying between potter's pink and the neutral tint. You can see that even though the potter's pink looks thick and creamy in the palette, it is very weak and watery on the paper. Have faith, it will come together. Time. 
tilt the paper to help with the flow. He's still working wet on wet and adding stronger pigment now to create the next layer of the background. Remember that watercolour goes terribly dull when it dries, so use strong pigments here. Dabbing at random to resemble the shapes of the trees in the background. Now sometimes, when you are in the zone, you don't really pay attention. Cadmium orange wasn't in the planning for this painting, but Heinrich caught a touch of it on his brush when he reloaded with a potter's pink and voila, a new mix. Sometimes you do get Bob Ross's happy accidents. Have a look at how the potter's pink granulated at the top and in the tree line. Use the same unwashed hake to start creating the foreground. Loose streaks with the tip and the belly of the brush, resembling dry brush strokes. That random drop that flowed down, well, just paint your foreground over it. Leave plenty of white space. You can always cover it up if you don't need it, but it is virtually impossible to get it back once you have painted over it. The paint above the horizon line has settled a bit, so he's adding the next layer of strong neutral tint for the shadows and to push the tree line further back. He's adding a touch of the mishap cadmium orange to bring the background and the foreground into harmony. During all this time, he has not rinsed the brush. The hage retains a lot of pigment and by just reloading it every time, you get amazing color mixes. He simply dabs one side of the brush into one color and the other side into a different color. That way, the paint mixes freely and naturally while he lays it down. He used diagonal brush strokes to resemble a bit of a slope in the foreground. That creates dimension in your painting and prevents the area from looking too dimensional or flat. He's tilting the paper again to help with the flow of the paint. If it doesn't flow enough to your liking, Use a spray bottle to reactivate the paint and tilt again. You might want to have a look at different kinds of spray bottles though. Some spray with larger droplets, which can cause minute cauliflowers on your paper. And some spray with a fine mist. I prefer the fine mist, but it's your choice. Keep tilting the paper from side to side and up and down until you get the desired spread. Let your painting dry naturally. With this type of painting, it's probably best not to use a hairdryer, but if you are in a hurry, let the paint settle a bit and then use the hairdryer on a low, cool setting about 30 to 60 centimeters away from the paper. We usually place the painting in front of a fan on a low setting once the paint has settled. This does not disturb the paint and helps it to dry faster. The underwash has now dried and you can see why he used such strong pigments. The color has faded a lot. Notice the granulation where the potter's pink was added. Beautiful, natural texture. He's using a no-name Chinese calligraphy brush to very lightly paint some trunks and branches in the background. 
these should really be very faint as they only serve to give perspective. On the palette, we now have neutral tint at number one, potter's pink at number two and cadmium orange at number three. The trees are not all painted at the same height above the horizon line. This creates depth. Harry is using the silver black velvet number 8 round to paint the wall on the right. He will work wet on dry with a cadmium orange, but then wet in wet with a potter's pink and neutral tint to create the layers for the wall. He's using a store card to scrape some texture into the wall to make the different stones stand out. The paint is still very wet and the pigments are creamy, so it's the best time to do the scraping for the stones. Hold the card firmly in your hand and scrape in a semi-circular motion, essentially pushing the wet paint into a line, creating natural looking light and shadow. By sometimes pushing the paint with a card and then at other times scraping, he creates different layers and textures. You can now see how the three different color layers work together to create rocks that look more natural. He's picking up a bit of neutral tint with a corner of the card and dabbing it into the rocks to create more shadows, especially underneath the wall, grounding the wall with a few swipes of the card. Now the wall looks like it is sitting on the ground and not floating in the air. He's using neutral tint and the calligraphy brush again to paint the tree behind the wall. You can use a rigger or a script liner to get the same effect. Hold the brush lightly and use the tip of the brush to make the thin lines of the trunk and branches. Place the tip of the brush on the trunk and pull lightly upwards or outwards, letting the tip move on in its own direction. This way your branches will look more natural and you won't fall into a pattern drawing the branches all in the same way. This tree is the focal point of the painting. It needs to stand out. So he's using a strong mix of the neutral tint and he will add a lot more detail to it.
He's using an old brush to mix up some more potter's pink. He always uses an old brush to set his premixes because with some paints, such as the potter's pink, the amount of rubbing you need to reactivate the pigment will probably ruin your brush. A fan brush is a rather handy tool to have if you want to create loose foliage. Dip the fan in the potter's pink and just dab down on the paper. Always work very lightly. Dip in the neutral tint for the shadows. And the light in this painting is coming from the top right. So the right hand side of the tree has very few shadows, while the left hand side has more and darker shadows. For the wall on the left, you follow the same techniques as the one on the right. Start with a cadmium orange and then layer wet in wet with neutral tint and potter's pink. Use strong, creamy mixes. Get out your magic store card and scrape the rocks, adding shadows with the tip of the card dipped in neutral tint. He's using the silver black velvet again to enhance the shadows in the foreground and on the wall. He uses the dry brush technique to add more texture to the wall, lightly brushing the tip and belly of the brush alternatively over the wall. The brush needs to be damp with very little paint, otherwise you will end up having a blob of paint on the paper and not the textured streaks you were looking for. Have a look at where the shadows lie on the wall. The wall on the right has its shadow at the tip in the middle, as the tree contributes to the shadow there. The wall on the left has its shadow in the corner on the left. Shadows can make or break your painting. 
take care to paint the shadows where they would make sense. Now he's defining the horizon line a bit by adding a broken line and some more definition to the trees in the background. It's important to vary the height and the placing of the trees to create depth and dimension. Adding some grasses will give life to the picture. He is using the calligraphy brush and neutral tint to paint the grasses. Start from the bottom and pull the brush up, almost in the same way you've created the branches on the trees. Grasses are not exactly straight. They bend and are somewhat crooked, so paint them loosely in different directions. To balance the composition, Heinrich is painting a line of trees on the left. The tree on the right is the focal point, resembling hope in a desolate world. So the ones on the left should not be overwhelming. They are thin and scrawny with no foliage. By painting them at different heights, they seem closer or further away. Always ground your objects. Without grounding, those trees will look like they are floating in the air. By painting a quick line underneath them, they are settled and grounded. Now it's time for the final touches. The underwash dried fairly uniformly, so it's necessary to give it some texture and definition. Use the dry brush technique and the colors on your palette to do this. Work very lightly. Use mostly the tip of the brush to make quick, loose strokes.
Don't forget to add shadows to the trees and grasses. Keep in mind the direction of the light. He used the Heron number no. 6 eradicator brush to lift out some highlights in the trunk and branches of the hope tree. Dip the brush in water, shake off the excess and lightly scratch out the paint. Work delicately as this hard hog hair brush can easily damage your paper. Dab out the excess with a tissue. By extending the shadows of the trees in the background diagonally, he created the illusion of a ditch or a sharp slope. And there you have it, using Potter's Pink with its amazing granulation and a store card to create this lovely landscape. Thank you for joining us on our watercolour journey. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.